Hello everybody, Drea here joining you for our watch and stitch today. We are ready to go in house. So I'm glad to see you all here. We have some lovely folks behind the scenes answering your questions. Make sure you tell us hello, where you're watching from. And as you're joining, I want to go ahead and remind you, this video, once it's finished, is able to be replayed. So you can watch this as many times as you want to. So don't panic, don't stress. If for some reason you need to pause your project, that's okay. You can replay as often as you like at any time. So what we're going to be stitching today is our 3D organza flowers. They are absolutely beautiful. And this is a project that can be truly unique. So the first thing to decide, of course, as you're gathering your materials, is what base, what you're going to put this design on. These are lightweight. They have some bean stitches and of course your organza. So they're lightweight. They're great for clothing or tote bags or all kinds of items. They're really pretty framed as well. So what I'm planning to do today is stitch out. I have a piece of kind of white tonal printed cotton and I've hooped that along with a piece of tearaway stabilizer. Now your tutorial will tell you to use tearaway stabilizer, but again, depending on what you're putting your design on, you can change that stabilizer up. We just went ahead and put again, a piece of tearaway stabilizer and a cotton base fabric to stitch this design on. If you were doing it on clothing, a wash away or sticky, whatever preferable type you have, you can absolutely use. I just wanted you to know what I have going. So my tearaway is hooped, my cotton is hooped, it's nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead by putting my hoop in the machine. And you may be able to see, and that's okay because this is what you should do, modeling good behaviors here. I have my printed machine steps for this tutorial right in front of me, along with my photo steps as well. That way I can see exactly what's going on. Now, of course, I've dropped them, but it's always good whether you have it digitally or otherwise, you don't have to be able to see them, but you need them somewhere nearby just so you can see what you're doing. So what I have done, again, I have my tutorial, I have my items hooped, my tearaway and my base cotton, and I'm going to go ahead and begin with these machine steps. Now in our tutorial, if you're not aware, we always tell you what colors to use, what we chose. You do not have to follow that if you don't want to. I'm going to deviate a little bit but for this one, since there are some flowers and leaves, I'm using a leaf color. So let's get started. First machine steps are just embroidery. I have reminded myself of that and I have them in front of me to stitch. These are some bean stitches. So you will see the uh, ply of the design varies depending on that portion. And bean stitches have that hand stitched effect. So they almost look like they're hand embroidered, which is super pretty. While this is stitching out, again, I know I said it before, but I want to continue to remind you, this can be rewatched at any time. We always encourage you to watch our all of our watch and stitch videos. That's why it's in the name. And then we remind you that they're able to be replayed. So if you're just catching up, you can start over, you can start again, you can pause at your leisure, so you can stitch right along with us. Keeps it nice and easy. Make sure you tell us hello though. I know there are a lot of you who watch and don't feel comfortable commenting. That's okay too, but I promise we're nice. So reach out if you have any questions about what we're doing, any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. And we have some people in house to help feed me some questions and to answer as well. Right now we are stitching design OF4. If you're wondering which one, the organza flowers, OF4. And we're on the first machine step, which is some of these beautiful leaves that are digitized. Super pretty. Looks like we're off to a good start. As a reminder, I hooped a piece of tearaway stabilizer and a piece of cotton. My plans for this later are to frame it up, but if you're using it on a garment or something else, again, change your stabilizer as suits what you're stitching on. How pretty. One of my favorite techniques that we have is this bean stitching. And the reason I like it is because of the difference in ply and the, the movement of the thread. So this is the same type of embroidery thread that you always see, the same thickness, same variety, but it is digitized to have a look that makes it multiple plies. So anywhere from three to eight plies, that means it repeats in that digitizing so that it looks like a truly hand embroidered effect. 
Now I have my first machine step complete. Let's change out our color so we can get a different effect here. I'm gonna add in a new green, brand new spool of thread. Let's get this one loaded in. Remember, if you want the colors we used, they're always in the tutorial. We tell you the thread numbers and brand, so you can follow along if you choose to. Or you can wing it, but we always give you our recipe as well. That's what I like to call it. All right, next up, we'll get some stems and a few more leaf accents. And we'll have some flowers coming up after that. So you can see here the hand stitching, the effect, it looks thicker, and you can really see as it goes back and kind of beeps up those stitches. Beautiful effect. Super pretty. While that's stitching, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a, a peek here. Have them hiding. This is another project, ooh, there we go. Another little project that is super fun and versatile. So these are our, our lovely flash sale item for today. They're from 2020. They are floral cinched bags. Now these are unique in the fact that they are done in a hoop and they are a differing shape. There's more than one size in this collection. Multiple designs, you know we always give you multiple techniques, multiple steps, multiple types here. And so the reasoning for that is to give you some opportunities to customize your look a little bit. But these are, again, done in the hoop. They're a drawstring bag, floral cinched bags. They are on super sale right now. So get it while the getting is good, as I always say. I'll show these again, but this is your flash sale item for today, floral cinched bags. All right, we have another color change. I don't want green flowers, so I'm gonna add in a new color here. This project is super easy in that my machine is doing most of my work, which is great, but I do have a little bit of movement here with my threads. Any questions happening today? Everybody quiet? Um, somebody wants to know which month the floral cinch bags will be released. Ooh. It does not say the month on here, but I'll have someone look it up. I know it was 2020. I don't want to lie to you, so I'm going to have someone double check the month on that for you. Look how pretty these flowers are. Super cute. Still going. So we are on machine step three of 14. So we have a good solid start. 2020. What month? September. September of 2020. So I had the year, September 2020. That's when the floral cinch bags came out. They were in all access September of 2020. Good question. I love it when people play Stump the Educator. <laughs> all right, still going. Now, if you were hand embroidering this, you would already be hours and hours in. We're just a couple of minutes, which is great. You can still get that same effect. And again, this is one of my favorite techniques here because it really, truly mimics uh, with our digitizing that look of hand stitch embroidery, which I love to do, but this is so much faster and easier. You can get it done in a flash or today. Look how pretty. So we have some more buds in this step. A few more goodies going on. While these lovely little flowers are stitching, you know what time it is. I believe it's prize time. So, if you are watching this live, you are eligible to enter for this prize. All you have to do is type in the word flower in the comments and we are gonna pick a winner for a gift card. So type in the word flower, get typing. If you're watching this on the replay, sorry, but if you're live, you too can win. Just type in flower and we will pick a random winner in just a moment while we're stitching out some flowers. All right, another color change. I want my design as pretty as possible. So we are on step four of 14. Have a few more leaves. I haven't forgotten you, I'm still watching. We're watching for some flower winners. Give you just another moment till I get this thread changed and we will grab a winner. So if you're a slow typer, type it in. Ooh, lucky you. All right, who's our winner gonna be? All right. Who do we have? Well, I can um, this needle to thread. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. One moment. <laughs> Who's our winner? Jennifer Mantlow. Jennifer Mantlow. Congrats. Please contact us so you can get your gift card. Excuse me while I thread this needle. The email's on the screen. All right. So Jennifer is our first winner. If you didn't win yet, you're okay. You'll have another chance. You know how we do. But congratulate Jennifer. Contact us to get your gift card. There we go. We're all set. I'm gonna catch this tail. Ah. There we go. So a few more leaves we're stitching up. And then in our next step, we'll have some flowers that are embroidered as well. So this is a mixture of techniques. Now some of you are like, this is just hand stitching. Where's the fun? It's coming. So it looks like hand stitching again, but bean stitches. I have some organza over to the side that I went ahead and prepared. So I want to give you a few tips that I've learned working with the organza. And I know it's sheer, so it's really hard to see, but you'll see it when I go to place it. Don't stress. There are a few things that I have learned that make life a lot easier with organza when you're using one of these organza techniques. So a couple of things, um, and I'll multitask, a couple of things that are important. For your organza, you'll want to make sure that you have a synthetic type of organza. Do not get your best silk or chiffon. Do not get any of those for this project, and I'll tell you why. Um, later, you'll see that these are heat treated, and silk organza is very flammable. You don't want that, it will burn. So when we go to heat treat your organza, you want to make sure you have a synthetic or one that's easier to work with. Good news is the synthetic organza is also a lot more affordable and a little easier to obtain. So if you have any silk laying around in the drawers, don't use that in your sewing stash. Make sure you get some synthetic organza. It's the cheaper kind, it's easier to access, and it tends to come on rolls. So what we do a lot is we get some of the decorative organza that's used for decorating or chair swag, things like that, for weddings and, and parties. You can cut that up and use it for a lot of your organza projects. It has a little bit of a thicker texture, almost like a cross weave, not tool, but it has a little bit of a thicker texture so it's easier to work with and doesn't rip as much. This other one I have is really pretty. It's a little silkier feeling, still synthetic. It works well too and mixing the two, you can get a really interesting finish. So I know it's a little hard to see, but we'll get you some more close-ups. When we get to that part, we're not there yet. I know you're gonna start asking, so I wanted to preempt that. But in the tutorial, it talks about taking organza and cutting it into various shapes. In step C on page 29 of your tutorial, it says to cut it into a circle. That's a good start. If you want some different shapes as well, instead of just cutting it into a circle, you can take your scissors and you can trim it into any shape you want to. I like to mix it up a little bit and trim into what looks like a flower. Now, if you're not the best or most straightest cut, straight cutter words um, here, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to heat treat it. So what I'm doing is taking out some chunks, little triangles, and making a really awkward flower shape. But I'll show you I'm not going to show you on camera, but I have this fun little flower shape that I know is hard to see. Let's see if we can get him up here. So I've made kind of a flower or like a little cross shape with this. That's one way to do it. Once you heat treat it, you get a different effect. So you can see kind of the before and the after of the heat treating. It comes out looking a little crazy, but once you treat it, it shrinks up anyway. These are abstract type flowers, so they're not meant to be a completely perfect art project. But you can do a mixture of shapes, circles, squares, if you want to, square flowers, why not? Whatever shape you prefer is okay. So we're almost to the flower part, but I wanted to give you a couple of tips that I have found are fun and helpful for creating these designs. Have a few more leaves and some accent plants. This design is so cute. And I know you probably have some questions about your organzas and about that process. Never fear we'll get you situated. So for these designs, again, you have some hand stitching, some beautiful embroidery-esque, you know, hand embroidery-esque designs, and you have your organza. So what I just showed is how to take a piece and kind of trim it out, make it look like a flower, and then you heat treat the edges. You can also do a round portion. Let's see if I can show you this one. 
just a circle like we showed in the tutorial. And then once you treat it, they kind of fold up a little bit or move up to look almost like a flower petal. That's the whole purpose of this. So it's an abstract, unique effect, and you can mix and blend those shapes to get some different layers. What I will say, another tip for these flowers, just that I've learned, if you use the same color on top of itself, you don't get as much of a, a unique effect. If you take the same color and layer it within, but put some other pieces in the middle, you can get a completely a brighter, kind of more, more fun effect. So don't be afraid to play with it. You can always stack and layer and do as much different coloring or different texture as you would like. And again, we'll show you when we get ready to place. I'm just giving you a few little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Do you have any questions about our organza process so far? A question about cardstock. Okay, I'll take a random one. What do we have? Okay, well, let me preface this question. The question was what weight cardstock we use. This project is not going to function on cardstock. Even though it's bean stitches, I would not recommend putting it on cardstock. You might get lucky, but I would not try it. But when we do a project that's digitized for cardstock or for paper, we just use a standard weight. So we get regular blank note cards, we get regular cardstock, nothing special. Um, at all that we order. We get it from typically from an invitation company and just get it plain. You can get it at any craft store or any paper store, but nothing special, just standard cardstock. But again, just because this is bean stitching, I would not be able to guarantee it functioning on cardstock as cardstock is paper. This is digitized for fabric. But a good question. Any others out there? Absolutely. So the floral cinch bags, the flash sale, I have two here. Let me see if I can get one untied. These have some really long strips. So they are a beautiful in the hoop bag that is a drawstring bag. So our drawstring bags are super easy to work with. We give you, maybe that helps. You can see kind of the overall shape here. I like them because they have a rounded bottom. Most drawstring bags that we've done historically have been more of a rectangle, but these are a different shape. They do come in multiple sizes and they're done in the hoop. So with a few steps, you make your channel at first. You can kind of see at the top, the channel is created. You have your front and your back. Everything gets put together. You string your ribbon through and then you have a functional drawstring bag. So it is a flash sale item. What that means is this is a collection that we love. We thought was fun and kind of complimentary for what we're working with today. Some florals and some hand stitch motifs. And we wanted to give it to you for a limited time on a sale price. So it came out again in September of 2020. It is a beautiful uh, release. It was in all access September of 2020. So if you were a subscriber at that time, you have it, go play with it. And if not, get it on sale for a limited time. Super easy to put together. Other questions? Yes. Please talk to me while I embroider. How do you heat treat the organza? Hmm. The question is, how do you heat treat the organza? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. For liability reasons, I'm not going to heat treat or show you any heat treating process on camera. But I will tell you that what we do in-house, very carefully, we'll take either a heat gun or a heating tool, whatever you prefer, and very lightly take that organza, once it's been cut to the shape you want, very lightly treat around the edges. What you choose to use is up to you, but for safety purposes, I am not going to go tell you to play with a hot object or fire or anything of that nature. I did not say that. I am telling you be very careful. That's another reason I told you the synthetic organza is important. You don't want silk. Silk will burn. Even if you're not using a flame, silk is very easy to burn. Some of you know what I mean if you've ever tried to iron it. Ugh, don't do that. That's so the synthetic organza. You can heat treat it with anything warm. Heat gun, heat tool, something intended for that. And treat it up and it'll shrink really easily. So. That is my best practice statement. Let's see where we are. Step seven. I have some more leaves. We're going to keep going with this green. I think that'll be fine. Uh-oh. I guess we should probably change. Let's change. Let's change. Any other questions out there? I like that you all are talking to me. So this one isn't a question, but maybe you could give them some advice on it. Okay. Um, 
Absolutely. Someone is mentioning they're thinking about putting this design on a shirt. I would say, my thread trimmer. Um, I would say you could definitely do that. Just bear in mind that your organza, the pieces are kind of free floating. They're not free standing, they're attached, that they do have some movement to them. So as long as you are willing to gently launder it, you could, I mean, organza launder is fine. Um, I would definitely like hang to dry or whatnot, but this is lightweight enough to where I would say you could definitely put it on an, an item of clothing. Um, for the stitching on the inside, you probably know this, but in case someone does not, you can always put some uh, iron-on interfacing on the inside once everything is stitched. That way you can keep it nice and smooth and it won't be bothering any skin. Some of us I know are sensitive and just don't like anything that may rub. That'll prevent those bobbin stitches from possibly contacting any skin. So, yeah, I think it would be really cute. When, I'm not saying if, when you use these designs, please post them or email them to us or show them what you're working on. We love to see what you're making. I know some of you follow our Instagram and our YouTube and our Facebook and all of our pages, but make sure you interact with us too. Make sure you like and comment and share and post anything that you tag us in, anything that you send to us. Um, we do a lot of sharing, but you have to share with us for us to be able to share back. So please make sure you send us your projects. I would love to see this shirt or tote or whatever you create with this and anything else, Anita, that you're working on, old or new. We love that. We're adding in some more greenery. Most of you have probably already realized the floral portion comes at the end of these. So we have some hangout time, some stitching and chatting. Oh yes, question. Ah, someone said they're wondering why you would need to heat treat the organza. Perfectly honest, you don't have to. If you're fine with whatever shapes you cut it in, totally okay. We like the effect that it gives and kind of shrinks it in, but you could just leave it a round circle or whatever flower petal shape you wanted to. You do not have to heat treat it. That's optional. You can do whatever you wanted. You don't even have to use organza. Um, you could use regular fabric or ribbon or some other item. Just know that that won't be sheer and so it will potentially cover up part of your stitching. But if you're fine with that, I think it would be an interesting look to try. We love to experiment here. So in fact, the whole creation of this design was a unique experiment. So we would love to see what you come up with. I always tell my live events and my watch and stitch, all my events as well, that whenever we create that tutorial and we create these directions, they are just our recipe. So it's just like if someone gives you a recipe for chili, say. You might add the spice, you might take some out, you might add a different bean or different thread or fabric. As long as you like your result, you're good to go. You can update and change most things and still get a good result. We're stitching out the flower pot portion now. I'm gonna grab this little thread too. But before this gets tangly, I always like to get, anytime there's a thread tail, I like to get it out of the way before it gets wrapped into my design. But this is looking super cute. Any other questions so far? We're being all quiet now. Any all access specials. We do, of course, have some extra freebies and all kinds of things that are cooking with our all access. If you're not familiar with what all access is, that is our club. It is a yearly subscription. You can get all the non-educational content that comes out. It does not include our extra little one-off designs that we've been throwing out. Those are something fun and unique that are separate purchases, just like Watch and Stitch, which is part of education. But all the other goodies that we release each month, you can get those for a calendar year. And there are always some specials going on. Double check on our website. There's an all access section. We'll tell you about the promotions and the various things. And if you're not an email subscriber, our emails will also keep you up to date on our current specials and freebies and goodies. But there is always something good. Absolutely. With all access. Look how cute. I'm loving this. Nice and easy, smooth design to stitch out. 
and we do show you again if you're wondering what in the world this is going to look like and you need some extra inspiration we show you in our tutorial pages there's a full color scan of each design both in the numbered machine step section and there is a page that shows you this design and you'll see the flower petals that we used and created in the design for the tutorial are different than the ones we're using here that's the unique thing about this organza is that every time you use a different collection of petals you can make them completely different with the same digitizing. So you have some options to change it up as well. Perfect. Yes, ma'am, another question? Um, just something I think you can follow on there. Yes. Um, last week, with the last live, mm -hmm. they wanted to know more about the Wednesday Mm. So say I Beautiful. All right, so um, I, know, I know you can hear that, so I'm gonna repeat it so you can. Um, when we did our most recent a couple of stitch outs ago, we had some printed fabric discussion. I know that's always a hot topic for how, what, help. We just posted a blog, Brooke wrote it, and created some information about printed fabric. So if you're not familiar with our blog, you should definitely check that out too. It's called Anita's Blog. You can see it on our website. You can access it through there. It's 100% free. So you can get all that information. It's all kinds of rolling content, tips, tricks, ideas, projects, all kinds of goodies on there and there is some new printed fabric information there. Okay, now, we're at step nine of 14. So in your tutorial steps, I'm pausing because this is an important step. Step nine of 14 is a marking stitch. So what we have done, when you're stitching this, whether it's with me right now or later, we've run all the pretty embroidery. Look how cool, it looks beautiful. This next stitch doesn't matter what color, but it's a marking stitch. I'm going to go ahead and change out my color that I want to use for the center of my flowers. That way I don't have to keep changing my thread. Just a tip. I would say for your marking stitch, if you're like me and you're not sure you'll be able to see it, you might want to go ahead and make it a color that does not match your background, but that's not horribly offensive. So this is what I'll be using. It's different than my flower pot color. This is the color I'll be using for my centers. So I'm going to go ahead and make it my marking stitch as well. This will be my last thread change. Yes. But we wrote any color in the tutorial so you can see that it didn't really matter. Just something you can see. So I'm going to use, again, changed it out, same color I'm stitching for my centers, just for time's sake. This next step is a marking stitch. So I'm on 9 of 14 where it says any color, marking stitch. And I bet you can guess what this marking stitch means. It's going to tell you where to place your organza. It's just a little X, nothing super special. Now after this marking stitch is completed, I'm gonna take my hoop out so I can place my organza. So I'm gonna to need to set it down flat. When you're trying to do this, please don't do this in your lap. Please set it down flat, take it out. Now, I'll show you up close. Look, at, it's a tiny little X. It's meant to be covered up. This little tiny, tiny X right here, doesn't matter what color, but this little bitty guy right here is going to be where I'll place my first set of flowers. For this design, because most machines, especially our single needle machines, have a presser foot, you can see there are several stems that will get flowers. We're doing them one at a time. They're digitized separately so your presser foot doesn't drag anything over. We're going to start right here with this one. Now I'm gonna lay this guy flat and I'm going to arrange some organza. I have all my pieces. Whatever variety, whatever size, whatever shape you wanna use is up to you. So you can see before, here's a piece that does not have any singed edges or any heat treated edges. Here's a piece that I treated. You do whatever look, whatever shape you prefer. Here's another one so you can see the example. This is a larger piece. This is a smaller piece, but it's the same type of shape. Your shapes do not have to be perfect. That takes the fun out of it. But if you want them to be perfect, that's okay too. We respect your decision. All right, now I have to decide. Ooh, I've grabbed two colors, so I'm going to decide what shapes and what sizes, and I'm going to layer them up and add them in. Now, if you find that you don't like your design or your creation here, take it off. That's why you have a marking stitch. So you can double up, you can really make them look kind of unique. I'm going to make this first one, he's kind of small. I think I'm gonna add in a few layers. I want it to be nice and bright. Let's mix them up. I'm being indecisive here. Oh, there's a big piece. Okay, I have a big piece. 
have a slightly smaller piece. You can change up your shapes if you want to. Let's do that. Let's change up our shapes. We'll layer them up, put in a couple more pieces in the center, just for some movement. And it's going to tack right above this marking stitch so it'll make it a center. Another fun tip, once you've put place your, your little flower petals here, you can always change them up afterwards if you need to fix them a little bit. You can still edit them. Now, tape is your friend. I'm gonna add a piece of tape in. I'm going to tape straight across the top. Yes, they moved a little bit, that's okay. I wanna make sure my machine has a flat spot to tack. So these are gonna look a little awkward for just a moment. They're okay. There we go. That looks crazy, but I can see right over the marking stitch is nice and flat, and this area is taped. My taping is not pretty, doesn't matter, it's okay. Put my hoop back in the machine. And then your next step is your tacking stitch. So everything is in here. My flowers are squished down, my petals are squished. I'm gonna run step 10 of 14, which is a tacking stitch for flower one. Now you see why we do them one at a time. That way your machine doesn't drag your flowers everywhere. It's a little center point. Easy peasy. Super simple. I'm gonna go ahead before I take my hoop out, I'll go ahead and run my marking stitch. Oops, there we go. My next step is a marking stitch for my second flower. I'll run that and then we'll repeat the process that we just did. Another little X. I'll show you my X up close. Yeah. And then we'll do the same thing we just did. So let's lay this guy out again. You can see the one that's tacked here is just a little circle. It's meant to be the center of the flower. And you have your second marking stitch. So let's take this tape off and recover our flower. Don't worry about it being smushed. We can fluff it back up. And I'll show you a little trick at the end too. If you wanna change the shape of these petals, I'll show you how to do that. But for now, let's figure out what we want the next one to look like. Do we go big? It might be too big. Do we go in between? Now, if you have a piece that's too big, you can always cut it. I'm gonna cut this little piece in half to give it a different effect. And instead of re -singing, I'm just gonna shoop, scooch him over. Put him in the center, he'll be a little darker. We'll add in some more pinkish. Yeah, let's do that. It's always like a little puzzle. All you're looking for is aiming over your marking stitch and then you're adding in what you want your flowers to look like. Once they're in, tape. And again, I'll show you how to edit if you don't like your effect. I'm liking it so far though. Kind of want one more piece. Anyone ever change their mind while they're stitching? <laughs> I'm gonna add in one more piece of color, this coral color here, and then make sure everybody is taped. It's a lot easier than it looks, I promise. Everybody squish down, we're gonna tack. Just like before, I'm on step 12 of 14. You know what to do now, you've already done one, you're a pro. more marking stitch which is a little lower. I think my tape's out of the way. This is why we gave you these marking stitches so you can see exactly where to place your petals. Let's take him back out. Lay him down flat. Let's unsquish this and now we're aiming for this X. Now, I will say with organza, when you tape and untape, don't pull too hard. You can rip it right off. All right, for my last one, I'm gonna do a mixture. Let's see. Hmm. I like this piece. We'll do him and this one. One more. One more. Boom. See, there's no wrong way. It's whatever you like. Tape it down. Remember, this is where it'll tack. You can see your marking stitch. You probably can't see it here, but in person, since organza is sheer, 
you know exactly what you're going for. Flat as possible. Machine step 14 of 14. I do seem to remember I promised another prize. I haven't forgotten you. Don't worry. We're tacked. Woohoo! We're going to lay them flat one more time so we can show everybody what we did. Now, well, I have my machine. Uh, my machine's done. It's happy with me. It's finished. But I have a few things left. Take my tape off. And then I want to look over my design. Is there anything I want to change about my flowers? I actually really like them. However, if you were unhappy with them, you can always trim up a piece and you can change your shape by adding in some little pieces. And you could very carefully heat treat if you needed to. I'm okay with how they look. I think they're fun. They're unique and they're all a little bit different, just like real flowers. Now, there's a little teeny stray thread. Let's get him. Now your design is good to go. So you have done, I'm gonna flip him over. Look how pretty. You have created an entire organza design and that was the most simple thing. So you can see here, the flowers again are unique. They're just layers of organza. They're really pretty. You can heat treat or not. If you don't want to, this is more the effect you would get. Uh, a little softer, but you could do that. We like the, the frilled kind of edges. It allows them to shrink up and look like flower petals. Now, I know I promised. I promised another prize, so I have not forgotten you. Um, your prize word this time is, uh, hmm, what should we put in? Petal, petal, like flower petal, petal. Type in the word petal to try and win another gift card. We have time for one more. And after that, We've successfully made our design. So we're gonna have another minute to double check for questions after, after this gift card. We'll give you another few seconds to enter. And then this was a breeze. Super simple. I love it. All right, it's a quick one. Who do we have for our winner? Name generator in three, two, Tracy Pfizer, Tracy Pfizer, congrats. You're the winner of this gift card. That's our second one of the day. Congratulations, we'll pop that email up. You can contact us to get your prize. If you didn't win today, you already know we have won because we have made a successful design together. If you were not able to stitch this out or you came in late, remember these videos are able to be watched again and again. They are on our YouTube page. Hopefully that's how you got here, but if someone linked you and you're not sure, you can always find our YouTube by looking up Anita Good Design. Look for that butterfly and thread logo you're all familiar with, and then hit that follow button. Make sure you follow us, then you can see when we post new videos and new content, it'll remind you, hey, they're going live, and you can keep up with us. Always be sure to comment and share our, our, all the things that you make. We want to see your projects and your pictures and your photos and hear about your ideas. So I am very thankful to be here again with you for Watch and Stitch. I want to remind you one more time about the flash sale, about the uh, floral cinch bags, September 2020, but they are on sale right now, right today. So you can get them for a great price and you can make these functional and fun uh, floral cinch bags. There's even a teeny tiny one that comes in the set, um, super cute. So you have a variety. I know you're gonna have fun with this organza for your 3D flowers. And I can't wait to see you soon. I hope you have a great, fantastic rest of the day. Happy stitching.